As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. Friends, welcome to 3ABN Today. My name is John Lomacang. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. And this program is specifically geared to if you are a parent looking for a college or maybe later on an academy for your son or daughter or your children, uh, this is a program that would interest you tremendously. And if you want to find out about Christian education, I also encourage you to stay tuned. Uh, in the first half of this program, we're going to be talking to the president of Washington Hills College. I'll introduce him in just a moment. And in the second half, we're going to be talking to the principal of the academy. But let me begin by thanking you for your prayers and financial support of this network as we continue going and growing, getting ready for the coming of Jesus. But right now, let me introduce to you not only, not only a comrade in ministry, but a good friend of 3ABN as well as myself, uh, Pastor David Shin, the president of the Watch at the Hills College. Uh, Pastor Shin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. It's so good to be with you here, Pastor John, and uh, privileged to be able to share a little bit about the college. Yes. Yeah, we are familiar with you in preaching. Also, you were with the Michigan Conference. But just give us a brief background of uh, your journey and then how you ended up at Watch at the Hills College. Yes, I began pastoring the Michigan Conference in 2003, and I was there for about 12 years to 2015. And it was early on the Michigan Conference experience and pastoring there that 3ABN reached out to me. I can remember, like yesterday, D. Hildebrand asked me to be on Faith Chapel. I don't think they broadcast that anymore, hmm. but that's where I began. And then I, they invited me to camp meetings, and I've been privileged to be a regular speaker there with 3ABN. And then in 2015, the Lord called our family to Alaska, hmm. and that was quite a journey and an experience. <laughs> and we were there for five years. And then in October of last year, 2020, the Lord called us to Watchta Hills College. Yes. And I was working on my doctoral dissertation and getting ready to defend. Um, and the Lord uh, called uh, me to Washtales College. I received a phone call from the Clarks, who founded the college and the academy, mm -hmm. and they extended the invitation to serve in this capacity as the president of Washington Hills College. Yes, and I know that as I look at your life and, and the kind of individual you are, not only in ministry, but we've seen a life uh, that is also reflective of the Lord being with you and your family, and praise the Lord for that. We know the college is going to be blessed, uh, give our viewers and listeners just an overview. And I also know that in just a moment, uh, you have two young people that are with you. Let's go ahead and introduce them first, and then we'll get a, an overview of the college and what Watcher to Hills College has to offer. Uh, first, let's go to Josh Holly. Hello, Josh. How are you today? Yes, Josh Holly is a theology major at Watcher to Hills College, and I'll give, give the microphone over to him. And then after that, it's Crystal Hernandez, who's yes. an education major. Okay. Yes. Hello, Hello, Josh. Hello. I'm doing well. Yes. How are you enjoying your time at Watcher to Hills? Oh, it's been a, a tremendous blessing to me, and I'm very thankful to be here. It's, uh, it's just been a good experience. Good, good. We're going to be asking you some more questions. Well, let's just go to Crystal right now. Crystal Hernandez, and uh, God's blessing, I know, is with you too, but how is your time there at Watcher to Hills? It's been a joyous experience. It really has. It's been an adventure as well, you know, going to 
different places, so, you know, being able to work here. But overall, it's been a rich experience. Yes. Well, for those who are viewing the program, let me start with you, Pastor Shin. What is Watch at the Hills and what makes it unique? The unique thing about Washington Hills College is that, well, to give you a little bit of the history, Dr. and Mrs. Clark had a vision to start a school and it began in their own home. Dr. Clark is a dentist and they had this vision to follow the principles of true education as found in the book education. Hmm. And they started in their own home and it began to grow. And then through Layman's Foundation, there was some property bought about 10 miles away, which is the campus that is today. And it began with the academy. And I came to the academy back in 1994, changed okay. my life, began canvassing and gave my heart to the Lord, had my conversion experience here. And mm -hmm. then about 20 years ago in 1999, they started to have uh, a vision for a college to be here as mm. well. And in about 2004, 2005, they began a college here and it's a four year degree. And what makes Washington Hills College unique is that we endeavor to follow the principles found in the spirit of prophecy uh, related specifically to the vision of Madison College. Now, E.A. Sutherland and McGann, uh, around 1907, were inspired by Ellen White uh, to to begin a college that Ellen White said was to be of a different order. Okay. And Madison College just had a tremendous uh, ex uh, blessing that was there. Okay, I see. Wonderful. So, so would you say that Watch at the Hills exists to center its education not only on the principles that you alluded to, but on Christian principles. Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Absolutely. Christian principles, and it, it goes back to those principles of the school of the prophets that Samuel instituted in Bible times. Mm. And the, there was a work-study program in the school of the prophets, and it was to instill biblical principles in men and women that would go out to bless the nation of Israel, and in this case, uh, the Adventist Church, the Christian community, and the world. Okay. Let me ask Josh, uh, because Josh is a theology student there. I want to ask him, how are those principles impacting your study of theology? Oh, they've been a, a tremendous blessing to me, um, seeing how we not only focus so much on just the academics, but the, the practical application of them with work studies and with the canvassing program and my experience here at Watchtower Hills has been amazing, and, and I've seen the power of God in the students here and even in my own life. Okay. And uh, Crystal, how has these principles centering, you know, you, you're taking education, how have these principles helped you in understanding education because you're going to be a teacher? Uh, expound on that briefly for me. Yes, and that's right. Um, you know, being a teacher is nothing easy, but coming to the school, it just goes to show that, you know, the principles that I'm gaining as a teacher are not only to train my students to become students, um, you know, qualified to serve our communities, but also to be qualified to the life to come. You know, and I think that's so important because even as a teacher, we need to understand that as well for ourselves, that, you know, it's not only to teach, but it's a practical lifestyle okay. that we need to learn ourselves. Let me ask you a question. How has the college experience there changed your life? Um, you know, that's a, a deep and profound question, you know, that um, has been rolling in my mind lately as I come to the end of my, um, you know, just semester being here. But it has really taught me that overall, you know, yes, education and, um, you know, um, academics matter, but overall what will help us be successful in life is having a spiritual life with God. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is very essential, um, you know, in becoming a teacher because teaching is not just only what comes out of your mouth, but also what you project to your students. Wow. And uh, these principles are going to be forever ingrained in my mind because it's not enough just to, you know, hear the word, but to be doers of the word. And I think that that is something that this school has really impacted my life and, wow. and just training me to be a better teacher overall and uh, a better child of God. Thank you so much. Wow, that was wonderful. Josh, you're going to be preaching from the word of God. So let me t also tell me how has that 
shaped the way that you look at God's word because you're living in an environment, as Pastor Shen pointed out, the president, that the environment is to shape the student uh, with the principles of Christ. And I love that. He referred to Samuel, the school of the prophets. How has that shaped your theological understanding of what your mission is going to be after you leave school? Well, coming here, um, this has been a place where I've noticed that people can come from all walks of life. And it's a place where people are able to grow um, from any, any, any place that you come from in life. And the way that I feel the, the school has impacted me the most is when I first came here, um, I remember my first day, I, I was so impressed to wake up um, early and have a devo have devotional life with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I had given my heart to the Lord before I came to school, but when I came here, this is when my devotional life actually began. And I've been here for three years, and as I look back on my time here, I can just see a complete transformation, like not, not even just in my own life, but yeah. in the lives of those around me. And the school is focused on not only just preaching, but also canvassing. And these yes. different works that the school has put us in a position to do have, they've just been an amazing um, experience for me. Praise the Lord. Pastor Shin, um, going back to the school, talk about some of the majors that are offered there at um, Wachita Hills College. Yes, we have a religion department, which has the religion major or the theology major, as well as biblical studies. Mm -hmm. And then we have the education department that has secondary education, elementary education. We have a business department. We offer a business degree. Mm -hmm. And we also offer um, a music degree. That's right. That's we right. have a music degree that is a relatively new degree that we've uh, started. And we have a, a new series of scripture songs uh, through the music degree department that, that we've been putting together with, with video and so forth. So those are the main degrees that we have. And as Josh mentioned, the unique thing about Watch the Hills is that they are able to pay their way through school hmm. uh, through the canvassing program. We're living in a time of insurmountable debt where right. people are getting out of school with eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, and that's just for their bachelor, and then they have to go for their master's. That's right. But we believe in a no debt. Uh, a system here, and the majority of our students are able to pay their way through school through the canvassing program that we've interwoven through our curriculum here. And so that's a unique thing about Washington Hills College. We believe that it's a sustainable system in which they can go out and do ministry for the Lord Jesus and not be burdened mm -hmm. with this financial debt uh, from their educational process. We believe that they should be able to go out and work and not have to worry Mm. about paying off student loans. That's good. For those who may not know what the term canvassing or the word canvassing means, briefly explain that. Yes, canvassing or otherwise known as culporter ministry okay. is where you go door to door uh, selling books like Christ Object Lessons, um, which is Ministry of Healing, Desire of Ages, uh, Great Controversy. We do have healthy cookbooks as well, mm -hmm. and they're able to earn their way through school by selling these books door to door. That's what we call the canvassing work or the okay. culporter ministry. Wonderful. And that offsets their debt. And, you know, it's amazing when you talked about how much education costs. Uh, somebody once said to me, uh, they were talking about education. They said, we have to consider that education is, uh, Christian education is an investment in eternity. But I also responded, I said, but the students shouldn't be paying for their debt eternally either. And so it's, encour <laughs> it's encouraging Amen. to know that they could <laughs> work their way through school because I've known students that have graduated, you know, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars debt by the time they get their master's or sometimes their doctorate degree, and really, you have to get rid of that debt before you even start thinking about getting a house and getting settled. So we praise the Lord that Wachita Hills has put into place a program that says to the students, you don't have to worry about leaving here and and dragging a train of debt behind you. That's a wonderful philosophy, and a wonderful program. Uh, talk about some of the um, some of the costs, uh, because a lot of times parents say, "Well, you know, this sounds great, but is it a cost-effective education? Is it uh, synonymous to education on the level that we see in a lot of colleges colleges today, or more affordable?" 
Yes. Our our annual tuition is ten thousand dollars a year. Wow. Which is nice. very very affordable considering that we're looking at colleges now that are going upwards of thirty to forty thousand yeah. dollars just for one year. So we're looking at ten thousand dollars. And if you work during the summer program and then we have a spring winter program and other ones interspersed throughout the year, you're able to pay off a significant part of that as you're going through school. And so that's the beauty of this model. We believe that it's a sustainable model. And at the same time, Ellen White indicates that the canvassing work is the best preparation for ministry. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's not just you're just working, but you're actually doing ministry and you're preparing yourself for the Lord's service. And at the same time, you're getting books like the book Great Controversy into mm -hmm. the home. And I believe we're living in the last days. That's right. And Josh who just went out a couple weeks ago and he was in a parking lot and he sold in one day over 50 great controversies wow. in one day. And That's so huge. these are the experiences that they're having, and they're coming back on fire for the Lord. And, and it has a way of just uh, just uh, enriching the educational experience here. So the canvassing, uh, the canvassing work, the canvassing experience is one that is 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 a, a central part of the curriculum. It helps pay for their tuition. At the same time, their own experience is enriched. They're able to grow spiritually, gain skills of relating and talking to people, and at the same time, get books into the home, like the book Great Controversy, yes. that, that are so critical for these last days. Wow, let me let me give Josh or, or um, uh, Crystal an opportunity to share maybe a miracle story, something that you've experienced that has really impacted you positively as you've gone out canvassing. Which one of you would like to share that? Yeah, I've, I've had an experience before where I, I knocked on a, a lady's door and she um, opened the door to me and I started canvassing her and she she was interested in my book. She bought The Great Controversy from me, Steps to Christ and Desire of Ages. And But I asked her after we were done if I could if there's anything I could pray with her about. And as soon as I said that, this this grown lady just broke down crying mm -hmm. uncontrollably. Like she was weeping uncontrollably. She covered her face with the books. And as she covered her face with the books, she pulled them away and she said, I, I can't believe you showed up today. Mm -hmm. And she put her face back over the books and began weeping. And at this time, I'm getting kind of emotional myself. And she took the books away again. And she said, I can't believe you showed up today. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, I need prayer. Please come in. And so I come in the house and I'm kind of crying now, and, and she's still uncontrollably crying, and she puts the books back over her face, and, and her daughter walks in the room. Her daughter, she was an adult, and her daughter's crying too. And she looked at her daughter, and she said, can you believe he showed up today? Hmm. And her daughter just shook her head, and, and they were crying, and I was crying, and I, I asked her, I said, do you want to share with me what's going on, or would you just like me to pray? And she said, we just want to keep it private. Just please pray for us. And um I prayed with that lady, and, and I went away there knowing that God had sent me there. And we have many stories of people having dreams about the great controversy, people mm. having visions. Um, but that was the most powerful experience for me because I knew that God had sent me there to, to help bind up the brokenhearted. Wow, it's amazing how the Lord sent you there that day. Harry, I mean, yeah, Crystal, would you like to share something with us? Uh, because I know that, you know, canvassing is in and of itself takes bravery but uh, what, has, what have you experienced that has impacted your life going out on canvassing? Yes, yes. Oh, I have so many. I'm, I'm just trying to think <laughs> of which ones to share. There's so many. But one of the ones that really comes to mind and has really just um, impacted my life overall has been one where, you know, overall canvassing is, is yeah. not always rainbows and butterflies. You know, right. you have those moments where you're just like, oh, Lord, help me, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> um, I was having one of these days and I was just like, Lord, please, I know that you want to use me. But right now... I I just feel inadequate and nothing was going on. And I'm just like, Lord, like what's going on? Please help me. And in the midst of this, um, you know, kind of like wanting to be discouraged, but holding on to God, knowing that he could do something. I knock on this door and, um, you know, I wasn't expecting anybody. I was about to walk away and automatically this door like opens really quick. And I'm just like, oh, hey, hey. And I kind of stumbled through my through my um, canvas as I'm sharing with this um, man you know, what we're doing. And he's like, hold on. And he goes back and he, he comes back changed. And he's like, sorry about that. Tell me, what is it that you're doing? And, you know, I started proceeding to tell him like, hey, we're, we're canvassing. Or, you know, I tell him about the, the great controversy. I hand him first um, habits that heal. He said, he said, 
hold on. He goes inside and I'm just thinking, oh, Lord, he just took my book. And he's done, you know, and I'm, I'm already like sizing up the situation. He He's not going to uh, bring back my book, right? Um, <laughs> and he comes back and he comes back without the book. And I'm just like, oh, no. And I'm just like, okay, Crystal, show him another book. And I'm just like, okay, well, let me show you Christ Object Lessons. This book has been a powerful, um, you know, just devotional in my life. And then he's like, oh, wow, yeah hold on. And he goes back inside and he takes the book and he comes back without the book. And I'm just thinking, oh, this is it. He's really going to take my books, Lord. I'm a, what more can I ask for? Long story short. And I said, sir, um, you know what we're doing? And I, I re refocus and I just get really personal and tell him, you know, the reason why we're doing here is just to be able to bring um, hope to people. And he says, I had in my in my hand um, the great controversy was the last one, and he says, "What's that book?" Hmm. And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah." And I show him the great controversy, and he says, "Can I have it?" And <laughs> you know, he took it. He goes inside, and I said, "Oh Lord, what am I going to do now?" You know, and he comes back with all three books, and he says, "You know, this is exactly what I needed." Wow. And he, he, um, you know, everything happened so quick that I was just like not able to process what was going on, but the story does not end there. I was able to, he brings back a check and it was a, a decent amount. I was able to leave more books with him, Desire of Ages and other books. And I prayed with him. And as I was walking away, um, he says, wow, like, uh, and I'm just like, what just happened? I, I don't understand. Everything Lord, happened so quick. And guess what? The story does not end there. But later on, I get a, a letter from the mail and it, it basically describes all the things that were going behind the scene. This man, um, previously to me knocking on the door, he was looking online on Amazon to buy the great controversy. Wow. And as soon as I knocked the door, I had the great controversy for him. And that, that morning, I, he had just committed Lord, I'm going to leave all of the unhealth, unclean meats and I'm going to become vegan. And I, uh, the <laughs> first book that I handed to him was Habits That Heal. And that's why he was like, wow, wait for me a second. And now I'm just like, wow, this is so crazy. Not only that, he was so impacted by the prayer that I had uh, with him, that I did uh, with him that he sent an extra donation. And that moment when I came back to school, I was wondering if I was going to be able to stay another semester in school and finish my education. But it was because of the impact that we have out there in these houses. He was wow. not advanced or anything like that, that he was able to donate. And that's why I'm still here. Praise the Lord. Wow, Pastor Shin, that is just amazing. I'm glad we put that testimony in there because this is what's taking place in the lives of the students. Briefly, before we uh, end our seat, yes, go ahead. No, absolutely, because when, when the students come back from canvassing, their, their faces are glowing wow. with the experience and the testimonies that they have out there. And this, this brings up to us to a core philosophy of Washington Hills College, <laughs> is that we believe that in the highest sense, the work of education and the work of redemption are one. Wow. In other words, your education should save you. Christian education should save you. And it is through the canvassing work that, that there, there is an important part of Christian development, Christian growth, Christian resilience, resilience that is brought out in, in being out there on the front lines, canvassing in service, because we know that service is an important integral part of the salvation process, selfless service. And, and uh, you can see that in the experience of, of the two students that we have here. Thank you. In about a minute or so, give me a little less than that, actually. How can a student apply? And I'm going to put the address roll on just a moment here. But uh, how can a student apply for uh, being a part of the Washington Hills College program? Yes, if you want to be a part of educational process that is going to be redemptive, that is going to give you the skills to be able to minister to people and and be able to be out the front lines of, of Christian ministry, uh, apply to Watch the Hills College. You can go to ohc.org and you can apply there for one of our majors. We'd love to have you come visit our campus here in That's Amity, right. Arkansas. And we believe that Jesus is coming soon and it is the mission of Watch the Hills College to train a generation of young people to take the gospel to the world. So please visit us, ohc.org. Yes, Pastor Shin, thank you so much. Josh and Crystal, 
May the Lord bless you both as you continue working in the field that's getting you ready for the coming of the Lord and transforming and changing other lives through the avenue of Christian education there at Watch the Hills College. Here's the information that you will need to get in contact with the college to take it to the next level. If you would like more information about Wachita Hills College, you can write to them at 46 Madison Way, Amity, Arkansas, 71921. Again, Wachita Hills College, O-U-A-C-H-I-T-A-H-I-L-L-S, College, 46 Madison Way, Amity, Arkansas, 71921. You can call them at 870-342-6210. That's 870-342-6210. You can check out their website at ohc.org or email them at info at ohc.org. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the second interview that I alluded to in the beginning of the program. We're going to be talking to the principal of the Wachita Hills Academy right now, uh, Mrs. Harriet Clark. Mrs. Clark, are you there? I'm here. Yes, welcome to the second half of the program as we are highlighting the college and the academy together. And I heard the name Harriet Clark and Pastor Shin in the first interview talked about the Clarks starting Watch at the Hills, the campus. Are you that Mrs. Clark that was a part of the beginning of Watch at the Hills? Yes, I am. Yes. Praise the Lord for such an impacting school on the lives of students. And, and I recognize uh, Pastor Shin is a returning student. He's now giving back at the very place that he found the Lord as a student. Give our uh, viewers and yes. listeners an overview of how Watch It to Hills Academy and College got started, the vision that the Lord gave to you and your husband. When we finished our education, we had really wanted to do mission service, and my husband was too heavily in debt to do that. Mm -hmm. And we looked for a mission, a home mission. We were impressed that so many of the youth that we'd gone to school with were no longer walking with the Lord, and we mm -hmm. were really saddened about that. And we thought if there was a school that could help them, young people, see how wonderful the Lord is in his counsel and in a relationship with him, that maybe that would make a difference. Hmm. And we read Madison, God's Beautiful Farm, about that time, and we thought, if the Lord opened the way, that was what we were going to do. And that is just a brief of how it started. And uh, what year did you begin uh, the Watcher to Hills? Which one started first, the academy or the college? The academy started first in 1988. And then wow. the college followed in 2003. Wow, praise the Lord. So if I'm counting that well, Pastor Shin was a part of that process there. And it, I want to just yes, say- Yes, he was. I want to just say thank you for the impact because I've met other students in the past that have gone to Watch the Hills and they have given wonderful uh, comments about the impact of the environment uh, and how the Lord has transformed them and equipped them for education, but also getting to know him personally. Now, what's the size, the general size of the campus? I mean, how many acres would you say the college and the academy are located on? The main campus has 430 acres. Wow. And then we have a health center that has 52 acres, which is located about half a mile from us, mm -hmm. the main campus. That's amazing. I mean, that's huge. That's, that's, if you think about some of the things that are offered there, uh, are, do you have an agriculture program? That's, that just came to my mind when you yes. think about all the acreage. Wow. Is that something for the academy as well as the college students? It, it is for both. Okay. In fact, agriculture is so important, we believe that all of our students in the academy have to take a class in it to graduate. Hmm. That's wonderful. Speaking of students, you have two wonderful students there with you today, uh, Emily Ndege and Raphael Morales. Let's just go ahead and say hello to them today. Good to have you both on the program today. Yes, let's start with uh, Raphael since he's right close to you. Uh, hello, Raphael. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Tell us about what, at what point are you at uh, Watch the Hills? This is your second year, third year, beginning student? 
Um, so this is my first year here, but I am a sophomore in my second year. Okay. And yeah. What impressed you to come to Wachita Hills? So, so I've lived around around this area. You know, I've watched the school and I've known it for quite a while. But I was impressed with like the spiritual environment that they always had. You know, I just see like when I came here to visit, all the students were they just had like a more spiritual like. Uh, mentality about how they look at things here hmm. and it just really impressed me because you know, I want to you know seek a closer walk with God you know and and that's just this school I saw as one that would help me okay wow thank you for that we'll come back to you in a moment but Emily and Dege am I saying that correctly Emily yeah yes tell us where you're from I think I asked you that but I want our viewers and listeners to know that give us some of your background and also I'll ask you a question in just a moment of what made you choose Watchita Hills? Let's start with where you're from, where that name is from. That's a very unique name. Oh yeah, um, it's it's a Kenyan name. My parents were from and I are from Kenya, and I live in Minnesota though. Okay, all right. So you're Minnesota Kenyan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And what are you what are you focusing on at Watchita Hills, and what impressed you to come there? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, at first, when um, my parents, my parents are the ones who heard about the school, and they were really impressed with the program here, and they told me about it. At first, I wasn't really sure, but um, after, you know, coming here, I realized that this is just such an amazing place. I really enjoy the environment here. Mm -hmm. Now, when I heard about the acreage uh, just a moment ago, Mrs. Harriet, Clark mentioned 400 acres plus another 52 acres that's dedicated to another one of the facilities there. Um, talk about the interaction you have with the students. Let's start with a day, uh, a, a day in the life of Emily. Let's keep the microphone, a day in the life of Emily. So just walk, how does your day start and what do you do to get your day going uh, on, a, on a regular basis? Okay, yeah, so um, the day starts, um, wake up is at 5.45, wow. and from 5.45 to 6.15 is um, devotion time, where mm. you can, you know, study your Bible, pray, um, something along those lines, and then we um, have time to, you know, get ready for the day, and mm. at 6.45 is worship. Um, it's joint worship with the entire academy, mm -hmm. and then um, breakfast is at 7, and school starts at 7.45, okay. and we go till... Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. You go till when? We go for school till 12.10, and then there's lunch, and at 1 o'clock we start our vocational activities, mm. and usually, um, you know, it depends on the day, but... You're, around it ends around four or five and then there's free time or whatever music um, you joined into and then um, there's supper at six and at 6 45 then there's a worship evening worship again and then um, at seven o'clock there's study hall to work on your homework till nine and then you know 9 30 is when it's lights up wow you were, you remember that very well <laughs> Uh, what year are you in as a student at Washington Hills? Yeah, this is my third year here. Okay, so that has been ingrained in you. I could see that. You, you got that <laughs> calendar in your head. This is, and you mentioned yeah. the times and how long they are. You have your individual worship. Then you have uh, corporate worship. Then you have breakfast. What time of day or at what point, let me ask Raphael about the some of the curriculum. Uh, Raphael, Talk about the agriculture part, because Mrs. Clark mentioned that um, they look at that as so important. Uh, have you gotten involved in the agriculture part of the program there yet at Washington Hills Academy? Yes, I have. As like For this year, my work um, vocational area is actually ag, so I spend most of my time there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one o'clock, I'll head down to the agriculture shop. We'll sign in for work and... The, the agriculture leader, he'll tell us what is on the schedule. It could vary from greenhouse weeding to outside planting things in the field. Or, you know, sometimes they'll be splitting wood because we have wood heated stuff. And 
-hmm. We go in the woods, we split our wood, we pile it, and then other days we'll be loading it and bringing it in for the for the rest of the school to be able to use. And, you know, it just <laughs> vigorating, uh, vigorous work. And, and it, it strengthens you physically and also clears out your brain for, you know, you be able to do other things and uh, like mental, you know. Okay. Which so part it's of... very good, like... Go ahead, finish hmm? your thought. It's good, very good, like... I just said, it, you know, it's very good, like it's, uh, it's just very, like, I don't know, it... it Invigorating. It helps you... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which part of that do you like most? Because in agriculture, you talked about the greenhouse, uh, which is obviously plants on the inside during the cold season, and then the cutting of the wood. I'm going to ask you a kind of a uh, tongue-in-cheek question. Which one do you like more, the greenhouse or cutting wood? Um, well, it depends on the weather. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, would, okay. If it is humid outside, it's kind of very humid in the greenhouse. So I like prefer, I prefer to work outside, and I really like splitting wood. It's really amazing, especially when there's amazing weather. And in the cold, I think I kind of want to be in the greenhouse where <laughs> I can spend the afternoon in a warm environment. Wow. Uh, Mrs. Clark, I'm going to ask you a question there because you've seen this school develop. You have seen the academy grow. Tell me, what excites you? Because this started in 1988. Here we are, 2021. What keeps you driven uh, to continue to keep this whole campus going from year to year? I think there's probably two primary things. I think seeing how the Lord provides and opens doors and really works miracles sometime, mm -hmm. and also seeing students like David, who graduated and while he was here, and then after that grew so much in the Lord that... Um, has been able to really be a, a, a servant mm -hmm. leader. And, and our goal is to help develop in students that kind of mentality, that kind of relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. that they'll go wherever he wants them to go and do whatever he wants them to do. And, and as we see students doing that, mm -hmm. um, it, just, it just gives me new, renewed energy and desire to keep on. Well, wow. I'm sure, and I'm thinking about this in the, in the realistic sense, uh, there's probably some heart connected to the development of the student, of the school. I guess at graduation, maybe sometimes you shed a tear when you see what God has done through your life and your husband's life. Has that ever been the experience? Yes, it yeah. has. And um, it has. to see, how many students does the campus hold relatively? Um, we have had as many as 54 in the academy. Mm -hmm. uh, that was with, uh, you know, several staff children who lived at home. Yes. The college, we've had as many as 75. So uh, we what? could have around 100 students at this point. And as we build more college dorms, we'll have more space. Wow, that's good. I mean, that's a wonderful So it's intended to be small. Mm -hmm. uh, we really built for 20 in each dorm uh, because we want to be able to impact students for Christ. And if we get too many students at teenagers, it's harder to do that. So uh, <laughs> we never want the academy to be very large. That's a good point because the more, some people say the more the merrier, but the more the students, the harder it is to concentrate on personal development. It's of very the true. It's very difficult. So talk about the interpersonal relationships. Let me go ahead and ask Raphael and Emily because they are not only in the academy, but you're building relationships. I know when I look back at my schooling, I can remember when I graduated, uh, we have some friends that are still friends to this very day. Uh, talk about your interpersonal relationships with other students. Go ahead, Raphael. So, okay, so when I came here, I noticed how all the students were very friendly. Like, you, they just kind of, you know, brought you into their groups and started the conversation. You know, they didn't let you just sit there by yourself. They, they you, you know, they involve you. And you, you, you tend to have a lot of, a lot more, um, like, better relationships with people like that because since the, the staff and the environment, they, they encourage um, 
being nice and kind to other people. Mm-hmm. You know, the students tend to go out of their way to just try to involve someone and and know the person and get to meet them and actually become friends. And and those friends, I I think they'll you know they'll, they'll last for a lot longer than just just you know just so happen or whatever. You know, it I don't know. It's just a stronger relationship because it's is based on being kind to one another and and very friendly environment over, overall. Amen. Emily, what about you? Because I know that I know that prayer is very much a part of a Christian campus. Talk about the friendships you're developing uh, as you're looking forward to uh, continuing into your final year coming up pretty soon here. Um, yeah. So um, the people here are so um, so kind and so friendly. I remember that. You know, when I first came here, I was, it was a big shock and, you know, I was kind of quiet. I didn't really, you know, know what to do, but the people here were, were so welcoming and um, I just, I, I felt very welcome here. And I'm so thankful for the godly students here. I remember um, some, some groups of girls would go on prayer walks. They would do early morning Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And that really made an impact on my life. Um, they had a big influence on me and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. You meet friends here that, um, will help you to grow, um, stronger in Christ. Wow. Now I know that, uh, it's a beautiful environment. What would you say, and I'll give any one of you an opportunity to speak to this question. What would you say your greatest challenge is? Uh, as a student at uh, Washington Hills? Because we all have little challenges here and there. Maybe it could be a curriculum challenge or maybe it could be environmental challenge. You say, well, I want to become stronger in this area or I'd like to know that a little better. What would you say your challenge might be? Let's start with curriculum. What's your greatest challenge curriculum-wise? Um, with um, academics, um Learning, learning the concepts here is, um, you know, you have you have to learn time management. Okay. And something, <laughs> yeah, that's so so crucial with um, the busy schedule. Um, so I would definitely say um, learning to um, use your time wisely. The time you have for homework, learning how which time to do which subject. Okay. Um, that's that's really important. Okay, Raphael, what about you? I would say, yeah, similar to that, too, is, you know, just the self-government and, and, and anything you do, like even your free time. Mm-hmm. She kind of touched on that. You know, you have your free time. You could either use that to go do an activity that you want for recreation or you can do homework and, you know, finish it. And and even when you decide to go do your homework, you could either divide it into time to, um, you know, I'll do in the first 30 minutes, I'll do, you know, English and then the, the next and, you know, and so on. But is like it, they encourage you in the time where you're supposed to go somewhere to or they already have your time set out and then they give you freedom like the free time for you to be able to divide that and uh, practice that in your life and that's something that is also like you know that's a challenge because you know usually homes are not too much like that schedule anymore that's and true. when you come here it it kind of prepares you for you know when when you go out into the real world the schedule is not to lean in all the time. That's true. I like so, the yeah. word you use, the phrase self-government. It's a really good phrase because, right, academy, uh, when you enter that, academy is another word for high school. You use the word high school in the secular environment. But it surely says to you, okay, we're getting you ready to go to the next step. So if you're going to be a responsible student, this is the time, as Emily pointed out, to set up your day so that you don't just slide from one thing to the next and say, what should I do next? But I like that. I, I could almost imagine, Emily, that you probably have something in your room where you say, okay, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, <laughs> 9 to 10. You kind of, or maybe right now it's just so ingrained in your mind that you don't have to write those things down any longer. But it, it's a process. But how long did it take you to get into the hang of getting these schedules uh, together when you came to Watch the Hills? Um, it wasn't um, too bad. Um probably within the first few weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask another question to Mrs. Harriet. When we talk about um, what makes Wachita Hill School different, 
because a lot of students might say, and, and either one of the students could answer this too, because it might be from their experiential perspective, what makes it different? And the answer would kind of encourage somebody looking for a school to say, you know, I need to go there. You talked about the size. I love that already. It makes it easy to concentrate on more of a relational aspect than having any student, whether they're outgoing or maybe they could be introvert or extrovert. They don't feel that they're overlooked. But in recommending this school to someone, what would you say to a student that's listening to the program? I think that it's a special place of nurturing mm -hmm. of students who want to grow in the Lord while they develop their academic skills mm -hmm. and while they develop vocational skills and social skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we have great staff student relations and an environment out in the, in the country, mm -hmm. in nature, in touch with nature's God that bring students away from some of the distractions that are in uh, areas where in larger, you know, communities and cities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and administratively, everything that is planned, uh, we, we've tried to filter that through the Lord's Council on Education. Amen. Wonderful. So that... Um, students have an advantage mm -hmm. in getting to know Jesus better and are, I believe, prepared better for service uh, when they graduate. Amen. I like that. And, uh, and in addition, we have really strong academics. We have a great music program. We have a missions program. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of, of little um, factors that that feed in, mm -hmm. but I believe the the filtering through the Lord's counsel is what impacts the program the okay. most that makes it of, the, of greater benefit to students. Wonderful. Let me go to Emily real quickly here. Emily, if you talk about uh, a conversion uh, that you might have experienced at uh, Wachita Hills, at what point did you say, you know what, now I see and I'm glad that I came to this school. Did you have that light coming on moment in your time at Watcher the Hills? Yeah, definitely. Um, the first semester at first, it was kind of, you know, kind of rough. And um, I think it was mainly because of the mindset that I had. Mm -hmm. So once I, you know, being here and just being in this environment, once I learned that, le learned to, you know, change the way I think about things and have, you know, a positive attitude, mm -hmm. um, that's when things definitely started changing and I learned to appreciate this place. Okay, praise the Lord for that. What about you, Raphael? Mm -hmm. what, I, I, know you, I know this is your first year there. Uh, tell us about that, uh, where you said, okay, I'm so glad I'm here. I know you talked about the nice people, uh, the great environment, but personally, uh, in your time with the Lord, how have, how have you come to appreciate being at Washington Hills? Um, so I've, I, I live uh, fairly close to this area mm -hmm. for, for quite some years. You know, okay. I've been involved. To, you've seen it from the outside. Mm -hmm. And wanting, I just seen already the spiritual environment from the outside. I wanted to be a part of the environment. You know, I want to mm -hmm. be inside of it. It's where I could actually grow my relationship. And I knew that I they were already helping me out with my relationship from from where I was outside of the school hey, and I wanted to come here and you know be a part of the school and and I I just felt really impressed you know that that would actually help my enhance my spiritual relationship with God. I love that. What you what I hear you saying is you were looking at Watch It Hills over the wall and you were seeing it in the community and you were just probably counting, man, when am I going to get to go to that school? Because if it's changing my life from the outside, what is it going to do to my life when I get on the inside? Emily, uh, tell a uh, students is listening to the program. What would you say to that young man, that young lady, if they're thinking about coming to watch the hills or are they even considering school in general? What would you say to that person to say this is the place that you need to be? Yeah, um, 
Well, I would definitely recommend um, this school. Um, just continue to pray about, you know, where the Lord is leading. But um, this school has, you know, really impacted me personally, and um, I'm sure it can impact everyone out there. And um, just try it out. Amen. I, got, I like that. And what about you, Raphael? Um, I think for you, if if you want to grow closer to God in a school, then yes. I think that this would be the school that would really, you know, encourage that and focus on your relationship with God above like all, everything else. And it's also if you want to be prepared for life and with a relationship with God throughout the whole the whole time, I also think that this would be an awesome place for you. It's Thanks. helped me a lot in the same. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you, Emily. Mrs. Clark, just give us an idea of what the cost is to be in the academy, uh, what the tuition costs are, just briefly. Tuition, room, and board comes to a little over 10000 a okay. year. That's wonderful. It's very affordable. And I, when you compare on-campus living to on-campus living in a lot of other schools. Believe me, I know that that figure is very low because I could go back 20 years or so raising nieces and nephews and understand that comparatively, that's a tremendous blessing. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you so much, Raphael. Thank you so much, Mrs. Clark, for joining us in this wonderful segment. The information that you're going to need to find out more about the Academy is going to be on the screen in just a moment. But right after that, we're going to have a few closing thoughts. I'll be right back. If you would like to contact or learn more about Wachita Hills Academy, you can write to them at 46 Madison Way, Amity, Arkansas, 71921. That's 46 Madison Way, Amity, Arkansas, 71921. You can call them at 870-342-6210. That's 870-342-6210. Or you can find them online at wachitahillsacademy.org. That's O-U-A-C-H-I-T-A-H-I-L-L-S, academy.org. Well, friends, thank you for joining us today on our program. I want to give uh, Pastor David Shin as well as Mrs. Harriet Clark a chance to appeal to you if you're considering an academy or a college. Are you both there? Yes. Yes. yes, we're both here. Pastor Shin, let me begin with you. Yes, thank you, Pastor John and 3ABN for giving us the opportunity to share about the academy and the college. And I want to tell you, being here at Watch Hills as a student myself re really changed my life. And at the college and academy, we believe that in the highest sense, the work of education and the work of redemption are one. Mm -hmm. And so this is a unique experience, I believe, here in following the model of true education, and if you feel called by the Lord Jesus to, to be a minister for God in whatever career that He calls you to be, I want to consider. I want to. I want to encourage you to consider a Watchdale's Academy and Watchdale Hills College. Yes, and Mrs. Clark, uh, about thirty seconds there. I believe that um, the experience here can be a huge blessing to young people. We want to be educating young people to be really workers for the Lord. And I too would encourage students who are interested in going to academy or college to seriously, seriously consider coming to Washita and having a part in being prepared to finish the work by God's grace. Wow, well, thank you both. Pastor David Shin, blessings to you as you continue and, and begin to be a part of the developing of the unfolding of hearts and lives for eternity. And thank you, Mrs. Clark, for the vision God gave to you and your husband and the many years of successful service preparing young people for the kingdom to come. And thank you for joining us. We pray that you understand that education is not just something for this earth, but education really is for eternity. God bless you until we see you again.